So dioramas are small scale depictions of a scene or an event or history or anything in general. So it's kind of, I like to think of it as a, like a little model of a picture. You know, it's a 3D, 3D version of like a picture. I got into diorama making right at, right at the beginning of college. I started, that's when I kind of started making dioramas and figured them out and uh, had a couple history classes where we went over some in college that we went over some uh, World War II sections and that really kind of interested me and my grandfather was in the war, but I don't think he liked to talk too much about it. I've heard, I heard a lot of stories passed down from you know, maybe him telling a few stories here and there. My dad told me this story that my grandpa told him. So my grandfather was on, uh, he was on Iwo Jima as a, as a radio guy, signal service company. And he, kind of after the fact, when, when uh, Iwo Jima was captured, there were still some straggling Japanese uh, Imperial troops kind of hiding out. Over the loudspeaker, they would be telling the Japanese to surrender at a flag near Mount Suribachi. And uh, every day my grandpa would go to the flag and capture the, the Japanese troops and bring them back. That kind of inspired one of my dioramas um, was of Iwo Jima. It was truly the greatest generation. I mean, what these guys went through was was crazy and, and very heroic. So I, I feel like I kind of owe it to them, you know, by making these dioramas, even though most of them won't see it or anything, um, but just kind of as a, to teach other people too, you know, what happened and kind of kind of give a small scale picture, I guess, of what they did and, and truly how great these, these men and women were, so. Well, my grandfather, he had a bunch of pictures from when he was on Iwo Jima, so he's got plenty of cool pictures in there of him working and hanging out with his buddies and stuff, and they're pretty cool pictures. My experience at the at the Fagan Fighters Museum also kind of really inspired me to do some of these dioramas. I, I noticed the Fagans were working on their Facebook page, they were working on a hell diver. Um, so I kind of did some research into it, um, thought it was a really cool looking plane, and uh, so I decided to make a torpedo diorama with the hell diver. And I also made a, uh, a model of uh, Ron Fagan's uh, Sweet Revenge, his P-51D. So Fagan Fighters Museum definitely has had an impact on, on my dioramas. And I, I think that that museum, what they're doing over there is really great. Seeing the real planes uh, like Sweet Revenge, I mean, I was 
you're five feet from these planes. Just a real awesome experience, how, how rare some of these planes have become now and what good shape they're in and preserving history, teaching others, teaching young kids about, about history and inspiring me more and pretty eye-opening. So the basics, your base can either be like wood or I like to use styrofoam or the high density foam, the insulation foam, because uh, it keeps it pretty light. After that, then I'll actually take, it's called Sculpt-A-Mold, to make it so the gives the gives the ground character. It doesn't, it's, so it's not just a flat um, diorama that you work, unless that's what you're going for, like if you're doing like a, a road or something, then, then I leave it flat. Looks like like that chowder you used to get in high school or something. I'm just joking. Now we'll just kind of mix it around and go from there. So the, the, the one I'm going for here is I'm gonna do a smaller scale D-Day. Omaha Beach, Utah Beach. And you, you know, use your imagination which one. That's what I like about dioramas is your imagination can run free. You can create your own scene in history, almost, you know, so I, I, I'd, be, I'd be creative. Some of these are based off of actual events that happened, such as D-Day, and some of them are just theoretical, what could, have, what could have happened maybe in the war, kind of my own depiction of it. And I've always kind of been a creative guy, but never really did anything with it. And now this is, this is kind of my calling. I found it, and I, I really enjoy it, and I'm going to continue to do it. If I could, I'd, I'd love to do this for other people too and, if, and, and make other people's um, kind of inspirations come true if they'd like. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota, on the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram. Online at 96.7cram.com. <laughs>